What's going on guys, Briar Rabbit here. Today we're gonna talk a little bit about this guy. This is the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller. And I'm gonna give you guys a pretty honest opinion on whether you need to get this or not if you already own a Switch or if you're planning on getting a Switch. Now currently, these things can be a little hard to find and I was lucky enough to get one when I picked up my Switch at my local GameStop, uh, which I'm very happy about now because as you'll learn in this review, I almost consider this thing a must buy if you are a serious gamer. If you play a lot of games, especially uh, if you don't want to have to stop playing to charge your controller uh, halfway through your gameplay session. So before we talk about the controller itself, let's talk about the inbox options. When you buy your Switch, what you're gonna find is this. This is basically a blank for the Joy-Cons that attach to the system to slide into. So when you're playing in portable mode, you can just have the Joy-Cons on the side and it works pretty good that way. It feels like a portable system if a slightly large one, but when you wanna have this thing docked and you wanna play sitting on the couch on a big TV, you're not gonna want to you know, have this thing in here. So it does come with an option to have this the switch docked and take the Joy-Cons out. So to do that, you simply hit these two buttons on either side, uh, you hold them in and you slide them out. Once you've done that, <clears throat> you can slide them right in to this little controller. Now there's a couple of things you need to know about this when, if you're thinking about buying a Pro Controller. One is, these Joy-Cons don't feel like real controllers. They feel like portable controllers. The, the best comparison I can make is maybe the PS Vita um, joysticks. It is a short throw and they're very shallow. I don't know if you can see that, uh, but they're not a very long throw. If you look at a comparison here uh, between the length of the sticks on the Pro Controller and on the Joy-Cons, you're gonna see that those Joy-Cons are actually rather flush to the system, which is great for portability, but not so great for moving around. They just don't move a ton. The other thing you're gonna to wanna to know about this is that these buttons here and here are really small, man. If you compare them to the buttons on the Pro Controller, these are much larger buttons and they feel much more natural to a gamer. These ones are very small. Again, they're great for portability. They're great if you wanna you know, make a very tiny controller, you've gotta put them somewhere. But for longer play sessions or you know, for sitting on your couch or if you got bigger thumbs like me, they're really small. Also, the minus button and plus button, especially the minus button, uh, when accessed in game, it's a little bit hard to hit without actually pushing down on the, on the left joystick. So it's something to be concerned with. All of that stuff though, in my opinion, I can work around. The biggest problem with this by far is the fact that when you are playing with this configuration, there is no way to charge the controllers during gameplay. So the way these are charged is by hooking them back up to your Switch, charging your Switch, and then that charges the controllers as well. So. If you're playing long game sessions on your TV, let's play, say you wanna play Zelda, uh, over time you might find that the controllers actually wear out, which may not happen the first day, it may not happen the second day, but when it does happen, that means that you are going to be forced to remove the controllers from this blank, basically, attach them back to the Switch and wait for them to charge. That's a real problem. Now, Nintendo does sell Another thing very similar to this that does charge the battery, it has a USB port in it. Uh, it doesn't have an internal battery, so it doesn't actually extend the life of the Joy-Cons any, but it does at least allow you to charge the controllers while you're playing. However, once you start spending money on that, it's not long to figure out that, hey, Nintendo sells this thing called a Pro Controller, and that can be charged using a USB-C port, while you're playing, it doesn't have to be hooked up to the Switch, so it's great for couch gaming. For me, I'm a streamer, I don't wanna risk having the batteries run out and me having to stop to play while I'm actually streaming because my batteries ran out on my controller. Uh, so that's why with a PS4 controller or an Xbox One controller, I mainly play plugged in. And that's what I plan to do with the Nintendo Switch as well. 
Now, this does have a battery in it. It is Amiibo compatible, so you can actually touch Amiibos to the controller itself to have them register. Uh, it has a battery indicator. You can see right down here. Right now, mine's about halfway charged. It needs to be charged up a little bit. Uh, but what I find about this controller in general is it's a much more comfortable controller than playing with the Joy-Cons hooked up to uh, this blank device here. It's not that this is an awful configuration, but it feels a little close together. Like your hands are a little bit close together. These side um, palm rests don't kind of project out as much as you're used to. And the buttons are small and the joysticks are a little small. It's just not as comfortable as a controller that you might be useful, used to with something like a PS4 or even an Xbox 360. So I really do advise people, especially if you're planning on playing longer PlayStations, play sessions, definitely pick up a Nintendo Switch Pro controller. Uh, it is a very comfortable controller. The thumbsticks feel great. In fact, if you're used to a 360 controller, this feels very, very similar to a 360 controller. Uh, it's got a lot of the same design language. In fact, I find that the Nintendo Switch controller is actually more comfortable than the 360 controller. It fits in my hand well, the buttons are easy to find, uh, the triggers and uh, shoulder buttons are in easy places to find. Um, one thing to note about the controller though is that these are different than most triggers on other consoles. This is a button, not a smooth analog button. So if you look at like a PS4 controller, what we got here, is you'll see that there is travel on this. And that's great for racing games, right? When you want half throttle, you only pull it halfway down. This is, it feels like a digital button, right? Is It's a click. So it's not going to be great for that type of game. Or for shooters or for Zelda or for whatever else other games you're playing that don't need that analog control on those um, triggers, it's not really a big deal. Again, it's a very comfortable controller. It's a little heavier than you might think at first, but there is a lot of hardware in here. Um, and the price, the price is pretty high at about 70 bucks. I think right now it retails for $69.99, which is really high for a controller. Um, for comparison, I believe you can pick up a PS4 controller for around 50 bucks, maybe 55 right now. Uh, so that, that seems really high and there are no special features. It's not like a, you know, a scuff or an Xbox One controller that has paddles on the back. Uh, this really does feel like a very basic modern controller Although a very good one, a very solid feeling one, and a very comfortable one. But, because I would recommend picking this up along with the purchase of your Switch, especially if you're going to be doing a lot of couch gaming for long sessions, that significantly raises the price of the Switch console. Instead of looking at $300 out the door for the Switch and the Joy-Cons, uh, now you're really looking at about $370. And once you add up tax, you know, you're pushing that $400 limit pretty quick. And that is really going to be price competitive with, you know, some other more, more powerful consoles out there. And uh, that, you know, that is something to consider. Um, it's not that I don't like the Joy-Con controller. It's just that I like this so much better. And the drawbacks on this controller, they're fairly significant. The fact that you it doesn't provide a way to charge this while you're playing out of the box. I, feel, I find that's either stupid or mean. Uh, they either are counting on people going and buying a charger for it, a charging controller or a pro controller, or they just didn't think of it. And either way, it's kind of unforgivable to me. So w when picking up a Switch, I would definitely recommend picking up a Pro Controller. It's much more comfortable to use. The buttons are a lot bigger and easier to access. The sticks are larger and feel more accurate than the Switch controllers. And there have been reports of, the, especially the left uh, Joy-Con uh, having connections issues. I'm not sure if that's gotten resolved over with the uh, day one update on the Switch itself. Uh, there have been reports that it has. So, you know, your mileage on that may vary, but I definitely would recommend the Switch controller. I find it to be a very good controller, uh, but it's priced very high. And the fact that it's not a pack-in with the Switch means that you're basically raising the price of a Switch up to about $400. Uh, 
Uh, and that doesn't include a packing game, uh, which, you know, that's another, could be $60, especially if you end up going with Zelda, which seems to be uh, the most popular pick. It's certainly the, the one that convinced me to buy a Switch. Um, so that's a review. I definitely think the, the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller, while overpriced, is ultimately worth it. Uh, it's a $70 controller, but because you can charge it while you play, uh, because it's a full-size controller, because it's comfortable, because it's a very solid functioning controller, I do recommend it. I just wish it had been a pack-in with the Switch console itself. So that's gonna do it for this one, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Hit that like button if you liked the video. Hit subscribe if you're new to the channel. And I'll see you guys next time.